Today we will be applying a waved halftone effect to a photo using Affinity Photo 2. Let's go! We will start by converting the image to black and white by using a channel mixer. When we set the mode to grey, our image will get converted to black and white. On top of the channel mixer adjustment, we are going to add a live Gaussian blur filter to blur the image. For this image, I will use a radius value of around 5 pixels, which results in a subtle blur. The next adjustment we need is a curves adjustment. I will just add it for now and we will use this later to fine tune our effect. Time to generate the wave pattern. For this, I will add a white rectangle first and then apply a procedural texture filter to it. By default, the live filter is applied as a clipping layer. We can see that this is a clipping layer as the filter is shown in the layers panel when the layer is collapsed. I'm going to move it to the title of the parent layer to make it a clipped child layer. Clipped child layers do not show up when the parent is collapsed in the layers panel. The reason why I do not want it to be applied as a clipped child layer is because I'm going to add another filter on top. Anyway, let's get back to the procedural texture filter. In the presets there is a waves preset, which gives you a basic wave pattern. You can change the amplitude of the wave, but it is not exactly what I'm looking for. I modified this formula and saved it as a preset. So let me apply the modified preset. Now this looks much better. I will share the used formula in the description. It has a couple of parameters which allow me to customize the wave pattern as you can see. Let me resize the rectangle so the pattern will cover the whole canvas. Now that we have our pattern, let's continue to use this as a halftone pattern. First, we're going to change the blend mode of the pattern layer to multiply. Then, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur live filter to this pattern. We are just going to gently blur it, so I think a value around 2 pixels will be enough. I will revisit this and explain why we need this blur in a second. The final adjustment we need is the threshold adjustment. Let's add it on top of the layer stack and lower the threshold until we get the effect we are looking for. If we zoom in we can see that especially in the black areas the lines overlap, which is totally fine, but for this image I want to have the waves lines separated. I can lower the threshold, but this time we lose a lot of detail. I will revert back to around 17%. Remember we added the curves adjustment at the beginning of the video? Let's open this up. With the help of this curves adjustment we can fine tune the effect. If we move the lower left node more to the top we are making the blacks more grey, which affects the threshold and we get thinner lines for the black areas. If we move the top right node to the left, we make the image brighter, resulting in thinner lines for the bright areas. In this case, I do like the line thickness of the bright areas and will only adjust the black areas until the lines in the darker areas just don't touch each other. Let's zoom in to check. This looks about right. Perfect. Now, why do we need a blur on the image? Let's go to the blur and lower its value. Notice what happens. The lines are distorted and no longer smooth. So by adding a blur to the image, we soften the image, which then prevents the distortion of the wave lines. In a way, this blur also controls how much detail we want in the halftone effect. When I crank up the blur value, we lose a lot of detail and it becomes a bit more abstract. Let's now go back to the blur of the wave lines itself. Our wave lines are black and white. By adding a blur, we introduce gray values, especially in the transition between the white and the black. In combination with the threshold adjustment, 
This has as a result that the thickness of the lines vary depending on the brightness level of the image below. To show you what I mean, let me lower the blur value. Notice how all the lines have now the same thickness. By increasing the blur, we have more gray values in the lines. And this multiplied with the image below gets a more blended look with as a result that the threshold adjustment has more values to work with. If we go too far, the thickness of the lines will overlap and you lose the waves pattern, which, by the way, is also a very nice effect. In a sense, just like with the curves adjustment earlier, it allows us to control the thickness of the lines for the dark and the light areas. Let's zoom into this area and notice how the black lines are overlapping. Basically, we pushed the blur too far. Let's dial it back a tiny bit until the lines are no longer overlapping. Pretty awesome. We finished our Waves Halftone image effect. There are tons of other effects you can apply once you have this effect. For example, Let's make a copy of the waves layer and rasterize it. I can now rotate this new layer and have a look at that. Pretty cool. How about if we change the blend mode to pin light? But you can also apply a gradient color effect or bring back the original color, distort or change the pattern and so on. I hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. See you in the next video.